Hey guys, I wanted to do this recording in the event that we have another snow day. Um, I've learned it's better to be prepared and not need it than need it and us not be prepared. So just in case we don't have school Friday, I wanted to make this recording. So ossification is the process of making bones, so to speak, and this is going to occur at about eight weeks of development of the embryo inside of the mother's uterus. It's going to be all from fibrous connective tissue and hyaline cartilage. So there are two different types of ossification. The first one is going to be intramembranous ossification. And these are going to be developed from a fibrous connective tissue membrane. All the cranial bones um, and all the bones that are considered flat are going to be formed this way. And also the clavicles, which is an exception. Um, what happens here is that the fibrous connective tissue is going to be formed from mesenchymal cells. Mesenchymal cells, remember, are embryonic cells. Anytime you hear mesenchyme, that means embryonic. So it's developing from embryonic tissue, so to speak. There are four main steps. The first main step is an ossification center is going to appear. And this is going to be located inside of the fibrous connective tissue membrane. So you've got your ossification center, which is located in the middle here. You've got mesenchymal cells, which are the endo, um, the embryonic cells. You've got collagen fibers. You've got your osteoids, which osteoid is just unmineralized bone matrix. So basically it's like a pre-osteocyte. Um, and you've got your osteoblasts, which are, remember, the bone building cells. So that's step one is just ma making an ossification center. Step two is where you have bone matrix that's secreted from the osteoid, and that's going to um, start to create more of the fibrous, or to break down more of the fibrous membrane. So you're starting to see some new bone being formed. The cartilage is being broken down and starting to turn into bone. So this, what, this is what newly calcified bone matrix means. You've got your osteocytes that are starting to develop because those are mature bone cells. You've got your osteoblasts that are building bone. Bone is built from the inside out. You've also got your osteoids, which is that tissue that's being secreted from um, the ossification center. Step three is when you're going to start to see your spongy bone, which is also known as woven bone. Um, you'll also hear it referred to as trabeculae. So lots of different words for spongy bone. And you're also going to have your periosteum form. Remember, periosteum is the that outer lining of tissue that surrounds the bones. You're also going to start see, seeing your blood vessels start to kind of be woven through all of the different um, layers of the trabeculae. Our last step is that something called a bone collar is going to form, and this is going to be made of compact bone. You're also going to have red bone marrow that's going to start to appear. Once this occurs, you'll have your fully formed spongy bone, you're going to have your fully formed compact bone, and just over time, you're going to start to rebuild and break down bone as just a normal process of um, osteogenesis, so just maintaining bone strength, so to speak. The second stage of ossification is called endochondral ossification. And this is a different type of ossification from intramembranous. When we said intramembranous ossification, that was for all flat bones, which is your cranial bones, as well as your clavicles. Endochondral ossification is basically for all other bones besides your skull and clavicles, and they're going to be formed by this method. Again, it develops about the second month of development in the fetus, developing inside of the mother's uterus. How this works is basically we have a hyaline cartilage that's, that's going to be used as a model. In order for a bone to form, that hyaline cartilage model must be broken down as ossification proceeds. So basically it's going to break down the cartilage and at the ends of the long bones we're going to have the extra left over called articular cartilage, which remember we talked about as being kind of a cushion and um, prevent friction from the bones rubbing against each other. So there is a method to this process. So as we have the breakdown of cartilage, we're going to start with the very first step. So we're going to have what's called a bone collar again. And again, bones are formed from the inside out. So we're starting to see a primary ossification center. 
And this is basically where the cartilage is starting to be broken down and bone is start, starting to be formed right here. Our second step is that we're going to have the hollowing out of that primary ossification center and it's going to start to break down the cartilage and start forming that hollow medullary cavity that all of the other long bones have. The second step we're going to have is the blood vessels are going to start to um, make their way inside of the medullary cavity. We're going to also start to see in the fourth stage a secondary ossification starting to form. So you can see at the ends of the long bones, which is the epiphysis, rather than the diaphysis, which is the middle, are going to start to have those hollowing out of the cavities as well. And this is going to also allow for our blood vessels to kind of make their way um, in that direction. Then as a result, we're going to have two, we're going to have really just one hollowed out cavity that is the medullary cavity. Um, the epiphyses are not going to have a hollowed out cavity, but this is al allowing the blood vessels to kind of make their way over to the spongy bone. And these are going to be developed in the spongy bone. The bone collar was um, right here in the first step, and you can see how it stays pretty much the same throughout. And what that does is it helps to form the compact bone, which is the outer layer of the bone. Um, also, we've got the epiphyseal plate, which you know as the growth plate, and remember this is made up of cartilage. We also talked a little bit um, a day or two ago about how the epiphysis and the diaphysis push away from each other, and that's how the bone grows in length, and that is due to the cartilage going through mitosis, and it's spreading the bone apart, and then over a period of time, as you get older and your bones start to harden, that epiphyseal plate will start to diminish and just form an epiphyseal line. So there is the whole process on your one screen. Now, unossified tissue is um, basically anything that's not formed bone yet. This is why infants are born with more bones than adults actually have in their body. And it's because once these bones grow together, then they're starting to form less bones. Now the reason that babies are born with these soft spots called fontanelles is because they have to squeeze through the um, pelvis of the mother and go through the cervical canal to get out into the world. So these fontanelles allow for the skull to squish a little bit and make their way through without causing any damage. And there are four of them. We have the sphenoid, excuse me, we have the sphenoid, mastoid, anterior, and we also have the posterior. Now the anterior one on the top of the skull is the one that is the most delicate. It's also the largest, so this is why um, mothers in particular are so cautious of this soft spot is because directly right under there is their brain. So it's, it's very important to be very careful of those locations. So when we were looking at the growth and the bone length, um, with the cartilage undergoing mitosis in the epiphyseal plate, if we were to zoom this in on a microscope slide, this is what you would see. Basically, the growth and length of long bones has three different zones. Um, well, it has more zones than that, but we really only care about three of them. The first zone is the growth zone, which basically this is the cells that are going to undergo mitosis. These are the cartilage cells, and this is how the epiphysis is going to push away from the diaphysis. In essence, this is the growth plate or epiphyseal plate location. The second or zone we have are the older cells called the transitional zone, which is not pictured on this um, right here, but older cells are going to get larger and the matrix is going to calcify, which means they're going to harden. And the cartilage cells eventually start to die and then the matrix is going to deteriorate. So then we're going to start forming the actual bone that we are looking for. The third zone is the osteogenic zone, which is right here. And this is where new bone is going to form and eventually this is going to develop into the epiphyseal line. Now long bone growth versus bone remodeling, they're two different things. Long bone growth is what we've just talked about, where the bone is growing in length. Bone remodeling is a little different because bone is reabsorbed and added by appositional growth. And it's shown here, appositional growth meaning side to side. So it's getting wider, 
not necessarily wider, but it's replacing itself again from the inside out, just like trees grow from the inside out like the rings. So when bone is remodeling, it has these things called remodeling units. And basically these are just osteoblasts and osteoclasts that are side by side each other, depositing and reabsorbing bone between the two. And this is going to be a good way to maintain bone health because your bones are constantly exposed to different mechanical stress that they have to um, make sure that they can hold up to. So they're constantly going to undergo bone remodeling all throughout life and this is a normal and good process. Um, another thing that I wanted to add is bone deposition. When bones are injured or they need, need extra strength, you're going to need something called bone deposition. And basically this is where you need to, ha to have vitamins, specifically A, C, and D. You need to have lots of proteins, phosphorus, magnesium, different minerals, calcium, and manganese um, in order to mineralize the bone and make it sturdy. So as far as bone deposition and remodeling goes, they kind of work together. And it's almost a homeostatic mechanism that we're going to look at also. All right, so bone resorption is accomplished by the osteoclast. And an example of this would be, why would, we talked about why do we want to break down bone. Well, there are a variety of reasons that we want to break down bone. And that is because we have 